we could call that work and worship combination, that integration, we could call that the original economic aspect of the cultural mandate that we see being birthed in Genesis chapter 1. Now, what most people miss entirely from this equation is what I'm calling the corresponding oikonomic or purpose or telos-oriented dimension that's also built in to this economic aspect of the world. In other words, the way God designed the world wasn't meant to work on its own apart from its fundamental purpose in forming, enlivening, being a dynamic presence within these realms. When we're in tune with God's oikonomic purpose, which requires living, breathing, walking, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, will each, as individuals, come to a clearer sense of what God means specifically in terms of calling us as individuals. What's our role in bringing about that cultivation of the creation? God calls each of us to be wise, faithful, and effective stewards of all dimensions of life, more like Samuel than like Eli, when we think of an Old Testament example. And the goal, one of the goals, I think, as, as faith, work, and economics touches on the church is as ministry leaders, our goal is to help people discern their calling and living out of their oikonomic purpose with intentional with intentionality. The result of wise, faithful, and effective life stewardship is that each of us individually, as well as everyone around us, will flourish. And by flourish, we don't just mean prosper materially, but live out of God's fullness, being all that he's called us to be and doing all that he wants us to do at any given moment. You could call this the economics of mutuality. The economics of mutuality as a goal-setting sort of direction informs that activity that we're doing in all of these other realms. To learn more about the Oikonomia Network, check out oikonomianetwork.org.